Professor Clark, why do we need evidence in the context of disaster management? Well, just as in normal healthcare, we've got to work out what interventions will work and what don't work. And every year, millions of people are being affected by disasters around the world and billions of dollars are being spent. So we've got to be sure that we're spending the money wisely, we're helping people to recover quickly, we're helping societies and communities to get back to the position that they were in before the disaster. Where can we gain that evidence? There's a large amount of research already been done and so one of the things that we're trying to do is bring that research together. So the research has been done but people haven't brought it into one place. So we need to bring it together and then give that to the decision makers and the planners and the responders so that they can use it to make their decisions and so they can use it to help the people affected by the disasters. Please describe the activities of your initiative. So we're called Evidence Aid. We began after the Indian Ocean tsunami, which many people remember from De December 2004. And we're a fairly small team. What we're trying to do is identify these systematic reviews of the existing evidence and then work with decision makers like the World Health Organization or charities like Medicines Sans Frontier to give them this information so that they can start incorporating it into their guidelines and their policies and also to try and make the information available to other people who are responding and other people who are influencing the responders to the disasters and also to the people that are planning for a disaster. We hope disasters won't happen but we're never going to stop them. We know there's going to be another earthquake, we know there's going to be another tsunami. What we need is people who are planning for those events and who are trying to find ways to reduce the damage that will be done need to find ways that they've got access to this information. Tell us about your future activities. So, so in the future we're beginning to focus really on what we're calling the key influencers. And so these are organisations like the World Health Organisation, the United Nations, Medicine Sans Frontier, Oxfam, the big NGOs that are making large numbers of decisions for large numbers of people so that they have the ready access and then they can act as our champions in the field. They can take the evidence that we're producing and they can take it into the field and hopefully the people affected by the disasters will um, be able to recover quicker and better because of the use of evidence on what works. What is the role technology plays in all this? Technology is vital to this. Technology helps us to identify the research that's already been done. It gives us some of the tools to bring that research together. And then having brought it together, it gives us the tools to make it available like that to anybody anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm.